Okay, let's start out with how today's parable came across to me the first time around that I heard it in Sunday school class. This was the interpretation. Two fellows went up to the temple to pray. One of them was rich, successful, and involved in all the aspects of a committed religious life. Most people liked and respected him. The other, whom nobody liked, was a tax collector. We're not talking about your regular IRS bureaucrat. In those days, the Roman Empire hired representatives of conquered peoples to work as tax collectors who negotiated their own pay by overcharging members of their own community. The Pharisee prayed first and thanked God that he wasn't a sinner like the traitor standing next to him. Then he bragged about all the good stuff he had done like a cub scout only with a louder voice. The tax collector went next in line to pray. When he prayed, he wouldn't even look up to God. Instead, he just stood there like a quiet boy pounding on his chest and asking God to forgive his sins. God liked the tax collector's attitude, according to the Sunday School interpretation, listened to his prayer and forgave him, but God turned his back on the Pharisee because he bragged too much. Guess what? He ended up in hell. Moral of the story, we must be humble that God will smile upon us. Yay! <laughs> Don't get me wrong, friends. I like humility. God likes humility. Humility is a desirable virtue. I'm proud of my humility. <laughs> but there's a serious problem when we turn humility into a work. A danger among Christians is a kind of humility contest, a competition to the bottom. Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir famously said, don't be humble, you're not that great. Frederick Buechner once wrote, humility is often confused with the gentlemanly self-deprecation of saying, not much of a bridge player when you know perfectly well you are. Conscious or otherwise, this kind of humility is a form of gamesmanship. If you aren't much of a bridge player, you're apt to be rather proud of yourself for admitting it so humbly. This kind of humility is a form of low comedy. <laughs> The theologian Helmut Tielicke once said that many of us are less like the Pharisee with his uplifted head and solid moral character than we are like the tax collector, but a somewhat different tax collector from the one Jesus describes in the parable. Perhaps like a tax collector, we pray, I thank thee, Lord God, that I'm not so good as this Pharisee. I am a rip-off artist unjust, adulterer, that's the way human beings are and that's what I am, but at least I admit it and therefore I'm proud of my humility. All right, so let's come clean on the issue of humility today. Humility is not something that can be preached to others as a duty requirement or work. For the moment we attempt to consciously accomplish humility, we defeat our own efforts. If we use this parable in Sunday school to tell folks that they should be humble like the tax collector, it can only be self-defeating and utterly deceiving. 
Humility from the heart operates like good digestion in the stomach when it's thought about the least. Humility cannot be commanded. Humility cannot be sought after or striven for. Humility is something that happens when we stand in the awesome presence of God and honestly see ourselves in the light of divine righteousness. Humility is not a positive possession of our own fabrication. It is the emptiness we feel as we stand before a holy and merciful Father through Christ whose work alone makes us worthy of salvation. When we totally forget ourselves, then and only then are we truly humble and honest to God. So what does that mean for us here today? It means that when we're good at something, when we're gifted with something from Almighty God, we own it. And we say it. And we serve God and others with those gifts. And we take heart. We all stand in a right relationship with God, not as we ought, but as we are enabled by the Holy Spirit who moves us to come unworthily to the temple as we are. We do not come because of our humility, but because of the humiliation of our Savior and his labor from the cross on our behalf. Our justification before God is never based on the fact that two people come to the temple and by their actions approach God in the right way or with the proper attitude. Rather, our justification is based on the fact that one Jewish man went to a cross, there he did not so much teach us something by this act, rather he did something for us. He did what none of us could do for ourselves. Whether we are Pharisees or tax collectors or somewhere in between, the point of this parable is never who merits God's favor, the point is not a contest between who's more humble than the other. The point is that God chooses to justify the supremely godly religious snob and the ungodly turncoat tax collector and every single person who struggles through daily life playing games with humility. And what that says to us is that we are called to be the people of God and to pray straight to God and to live our lives with the confidences of the abilities we have to serve God in that way and not be so concerned about how that measures up to everybody else. Thanks be to God.